Onondaga's campus safety program is getting an upgrade. We'll tell you more about it next. Now, from the EMC studio at Onondaga Community College, this is an On TV Update. Good morning and welcome to On TV Update. This is Friday, March 4th, 2016. I'm Dominic Tibbetts. And I'm Bethany Kozachuk. OCC's campus safety program is getting an upgrade. On TV Update's Brent Carney went to the campus safety building to break it all down. Some students believe that there is a lack of security presence on campus. Campus Police Chief David Wall thinks otherwise. Lack of presence is often one of perception. So specifically, if, um, if you're the individual who needs campus safety or you need law enforcement at the moment, then it seems they're never quite there quickly enough. Response time for campus safety is key, something that SRC Arena employee Ellen Stanton relies on, especially when some of the students she deals with sometimes aren't the friendliest. Sometimes we have students that get a little impatient and not necessarily hostile, but not the friendliest of people. Involving campus security, all I have to do is just push a button and they usually show up. Another way students are able to communicate with campus safety are these call boxes right here. All a student has to do is push this button to communicate with campus safety. Another noticeable upgrade are these police cruisers. These brand new modified Ford Taurus police interceptors are equipped with a twin turbo V6 engine, which goes a long way for response times. With emergencies, we want to have a very quick response. Our response is typically within a couple minutes. So that, that becomes our priority. Campus safety isn't going to stop with police cruisers. Chief David Wall says more is to come. We're looking at community policing, so we're going to a different model of policing. So it'd be probably easier to answer better off once we establish that, that new model. It seems not even a budget can stop campus safety from protecting our students. At the OCC Campus Safety Building, I'm Brent Carney on TV Update. Chief David Wall also says that they'll be getting a new and easier report system. This system will make writing tickets and reports much easier. The Clinton Plaza Apartments in downtown Syracuse will be upgraded thanks to a $40 million renovation financed by the Mud Holland Group. Additionally, a $675,000 grant will be provided by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The 45-year-old building has been slowly deteriorating, causing 20% of the apartments to be unlivable. The renovation has been set in stone and is designed with a downtown Syracuse vibe in mind. Parents are noticing a prominent issue among their teenagers, the struggle to stay awake and aware in school. Can early start times in schools have an impact on causing sleep deprivation? On TV Update's Jake Shulton checks into the effects it's having on high school students. It's just another day for Marissa Edson, a senior at Marcellus High School. I find myself like tr falling asleep in almost every class before noon. It's definitely not because the classes are boring because some nights when I get more sleep, I notice that I'm able to stay focused longer. Many students suffer from sleep deprivation. Stephen Doe, a sleep specialist at the Samaritan Health Center in Watertown, treat sleep-deprived people on a regular basis. Getting less sleep than your body requires. Uh, you know, most people think of eight hours as what everybody requires, but some people need six, some people ten. According to the National Sleep Foundation, over 58 percent of students suffered from these early start times in 2014. With a great number of students not performing up to the expectation they can because of the lack of sleep they get, it's no wonder that there's a lot of these and not a lot of these. So could a later start time help students combat sleep deprivation? I certainly think that a later school starting time is going to make a lot less kids sleep deprived and certainly make their academics better, their health better. And that just goes to show a good night's rest can help you make the grade. In Marcellus, Jake Scholten on TV Update. According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, sleep deprivation can also lead to changes in mood, anxiety, and even depression. Make sure your kids are getting enough sleep as well as having them avoid taking over-the-counter prescriptions to prevent the onset of these symptoms. If you're using the Southwest YMCA and are using the lockers, you may want to take your lock with you. 
The Y is enforcing their no overnight use policy and will be cutting the locks on the lockers due to people taking advantage of the lockers. Any personal items found from a cut locker will be thrown away according to the YMCA's official notice. Coming up, we'll have a look at the weather forecast as we are anticipating warmer and sunnier conditions over the next week. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with On TV Update. I love OCC and I've really been impressed with all of my students here. I teach natural hazards and disasters. Uh, I try to bring in real world events to make what you learn in the classroom applicable to what you might read in the newspaper or see on the news or hear in the media. And then also uh, trying to make it interesting because sometimes science can be a little boring to folks. So I try to make it exciting and so perhaps you don't even realize you're learning science. Felton Art Gallery at Onondaga Community College. Experience art at its most engaging. The gallery features multiple genres of art, including painting, photography, and sculpture. The teachers here are excellent. I've had some really informative teachers. The lessons are pretty clear and the teachers are very social. It's a very social experience. I like the facility a lot. I like the, the studios. So I decided to come here. I've learned so much. I've learned an indefinite amount of material about architecture and I only have more to learn. I would definitely say that this school is excellent for building a portfolio to move on in this major. Are you eager for knowledge outside the classroom? Then visit Coulter Library. If we don't have the book you're looking for, we can get it on loan. We also have a wide selection of movies and music to enjoy on your study break. And our quiet study rooms allow you to work alone or with classmates in a private environment. We're extending hours during finals week until 11 p.m. so you can catch up on your work. Visit our website for more information. Take advantage of Coulter Library today. You'll never fail in your journey to succeed. Are you a veteran looking to continue your education? Then check out the Veterans Affairs Office at Coulter Library. We offer a variety of services, such as work-study, mentoring, assistance with financial aid, vocational rehabilitation, and much more. The staff at the Office of Veterans Affairs are all veterans who continue to serve the OCC community. Visit room C-103 or visit SUNYOCC.edu for more information. Welcome back. I'm Dominic Tibbetts. And I'm Bethany Kozachuk. We go to Caleb Casamento now for our weekend weather forecast. Caleb? Thank you and good morning on this rather blustery Friday morning. Today, according to the Syracuse Weather Network, we'll be looking at a high of 32 with a low of 14 tonight with snow showers lasting into the evening. And here is your five-day planner. On Saturday, we'll have a high of 33 with a low of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And on Sunday, it will be mostly sunny with a high of 37 and a low of 23. By Monday, we start to see much warmer temperatures, cloudy with a high of 53 and a low of 34. Tuesday, mild with clouds and sun with a high of 58 and a low of 43. And on Wednesday, getting even warmer, it will be cloudy and mild with a high of 61 and a low of 47. I'm Caleb Casamento, your weather forecaster for On TV Update. St. John the Baptist Church has been a beacon to the Syracuse community that has been a center of culture and change as it embraces yet another wave of immigrants fleeing from war and poverty. However, as that beacon has been damaged and a season of abnormal winter weather has taken hold of central New York, leaving its mark on a towering steeple. This church has been a fortress to those in need as it has served the community for over a span of two centuries. In 1826, just as a territory, that's when the people surrounding that area felt a need that they would like a church in that area. And then the building that itself that we're talking about today was erected and dedicated in 1871. But the winter weather that blew out the church window led to the questioning of just how sound the steeple actually is. They do this with most of our parishes. They then brought in an inspector uh, and city officials to look at it. It has been deemed structurally sound. Though there was a lot of debris that blew many feet away from the church steeple, nobody was hit or injured, thankfully. When we got those gusty winds into the mid-40s, that sudden burst of wind ended up causing a 
probably a lot of rattling up there and it basically loosened the whole window up. When we were able to go up in a ladder, it's a very tall steeple, uh, is that the other um, uh, reinforcements around the other windows uh, were as rotted out. That's what the problem was. Besides the final decision on when the window will be replaced, the cost will also be a burden as well. They're still determining what um, the process of how they're going to restore it uh, and looking at the very different options of how to do that, what materials to use. Though it will take some time before things get back to normal, the church will continue to keep its doors open to those in need as it has for many years. The Diocese of Syracuse and other church officials hope to have the restoration completed by midsummer. And if you are interested in helping out or wish to donate to the project, you may mail it to the Diocese in Syracuse or log onto their website at dioceseofsyracuse.com and click on Donate. The Student Association Office has moved from Gordon 100 to the Laser Rec Room. The Student Association Offices, the Food Pantry, and the Office of Student Leadership and Engagement are getting a facelift this semester. With all the renovations going on, students can still access the office as well. The laser room renovations are expected to be completed by the end of the semester. In Oswego, a section of Route 48 between Munn Street and Burden Drive has been closed off due to its collapse. City officials barricaded the portion of Route 48 at 7.30 p.m. on Sunday. The detour put in place is Murray Street. The section of roadway has been historically problematic for years, and Mayor Billy Barlow says the city is coordinating with the Department of Transportation, but it may take some time to repair. Coming up, Coach Bob McKenney trades in his red suspenders for Cobra Blue and leads Grimes to the second three Class B title. So stay tuned for On TV Update Sports with Devin Spencer. I actually was a graduate of the Mechanical Technology Associate's Degree program here myself. Onondaga, without a doubt, puts the student we want our students to be successful. We want them to come back to us and say, yeah, what we learned in this program was great. What we, you know, what we're doing, we have a skill set now that I can make a good living with. www.sunyocc.edu for more information. What I love most about OCC is the ease of access. It's so close to home. And it's just a beautiful campus and it's, the social community is so nice. I can really find myself inside of it. The business area that they just built is really nice as well. That's going to be good for helping out business students with their goals and tasks and things. I would recommend OCC to somebody. I think I think it's a really nice place to get an education. I think it's a really nice school to be able to settle down in and, and build a future at. I would definitely say OCC has prepared me for moving on my career path. My major is Fire Protection Technologies. I chose that due to the fact of my career path is I want to go become a career firefighter later on in life. My dad actually found this program out here from one of his buddies at the state fire instructor out in this area said this was one of the best programs out here. It's real nice knowing that I have other people out there who share the same interests as me. I love OCC and I've really been impressed with all of my students here. I teach natural hazards and disasters. Uh, I try to bring in real world events to make what you learn in the classroom applicable to what you might read in the newspaper or see on the news or hear in the media and then also uh, trying to make it interesting because sometimes science can be a little boring to folks. So I try to make it exciting and so perhaps you don't even realize you're learning science. So it's hat and gloves weather today? Wasn't it 75 and sunny yesterday? Fall needs to make up its mind. It's not all bad though. The leaves turn a beautiful red and in come my favorite flavors. That's why I always save time in my morning for Starbucks. I can grab a pumpkin spice latte and it can be served hot or cold to suit whatever type of autumn day I'm having. OCC proudly serves Starbucks. Come visit us outside the Gordon Cafeteria. Welcome back to On TV Update. I'm sports anchor Devin Spencer. It's been eight years since Bishop Grimes Cobra's men's basketball team has brought a home sectional title. On TV Updates, Bailey Mozo got a chance to sit down with Coach Bob McKinney to learn the secret of success this season with the Cobras. Five state titles, over 500 wins and counting, and a basketball knowledge that is extremely rare to come by. 
all of which coach Bob McKinney is bringing along with him to Bishop Grimes in his first year as head coach of the Cobras. I asked coach how his team has achieved their 22-1 and record. Uh, they bought in, they, they, they were excited about learning from me, I, I, you know, whatever, the championships, whatever, whatever it was, um, they bought in and they worked extremely hard learning the system and um, I think when you, when you put those two together you get a, you get a pretty good marriage and, and it's led to uh, what's been a really exciting year. An exciting year that has led the Cobras to the sectional championship game against the Syracuse Academy of Science. Well, the only loss of the season for the Cobras coming from the SAS Adams, Coach McKinney told me that they plan to keep up their defensive pressure the entire game. You know, we, but we also know this time of year when kids are nervous and tight in big games, you have to be able to guard and defend and stay within your principles. And, you know, SAS is probably our biggest challenge to do that because they're good at getting us out of our principles and getting us all spread out. And at the heart of this defense is Sean Gashi a senior trying to achieve his sectional dreams before his time runs out at Bishop Grimes. But first, he and his team would have to work tirelessly in practice, awaiting to face SAS for the third time this season. In practice, it's all about defense. We've been working on defense every practice. We don't, we don't stop working on defense. He, has a, he plays a defense, we play man-to-man. -man. We just play help line, we don't let anybody into the paint. So we've been stressed from the whole, whole year. The culmination of all of the hard work during the season led the Cobras to the Section 3 Class B championship title, a memory that each team and staff member will never forget. For On TV Update in the SRC Arena, I'm Bailey Mozo. The Cobras are saying goodbye to seniors Sean Gashi and AC Ater. Coach Bob McKenney says that he's very confident for the season, for the upcoming season, excuse me. Nothing like ESPN yet. But at Onondaga Community College, students get a chance at what it, is, what it feels like and what it takes to do their own live play-by-play -play analysis of the college's basketball games. Recently, the Onondaga Community College's athletic department has paired up with the students and it has allowed them to actually live stream play-by-play -play for the games. I spoke with a student to see how it has affected him. Yeah, I think it's affected me by helping me become a better communicator and, you know, I think as far as commentating, I find it very interesting. And getting this time under my belt has helped me a lot. So, I wanted to find out why the athletic department felt that it was necessary to get the students involved and how it impacts them, the faculty, and people who are just generally involved with sports. So I spoke with the assistant director, Nick Gatto. Um, I think it just gives us an opportunity to collaborate from the different departments to really tie everybody into one, um, you know, bring the, the student athletes together with some of the the rest of the student body and um, just give everybody else on campus a, a good experience of, of what actually is going on within our athletic event. Here we are at the Allen Hall Gymnasium at OCC. Now we have the women's NJCAA championship game underway. As you take a closer look up top, we actually have the students doing the live play-by-play. -play. What's neat about that is actually being live streamed on the Onondaga OCC website. You can view this game at onondagalasers.com or njcaa.com. The faculty here at OCC hope the students will leave the school with a little extra knowledge and experience under their belt to be able to get the right job when they graduate. The Lady Lasers finished their season with a 30 and 4 record which led them to a conference championship win. Unfortunately, they did lose in the NJCAA Division III tournament to Mohawk Valley last Sunday. What's more unique about the Lasers is Lasers basketball and even lacrosse teams is that they are the only sports teams live streamed and casted by the students. When you hear about NASA, your first thought is usually about the space shuttles and missions to the moon. I recently discovered that for nine OCC students, NASA means something completely different. Three, two, one, blast off. For nine OCC students recently selected to receive the New York State NASA Research Grant. Chemistry and Physical Science Chair Fred Jockwin, who is currently teaching the group of young scientists, focuses his studies on research and data gathering to bring real-life work ethics to the classroom. It's much, much broader. It's not just about rockets and space. It, it's about any, any student in any scientific field, any science, technology, engineering, mathematics field can apply. 
A writing utensil and a notebook will go a long way in Dr. Jockwin's method of research class. Contrary to the NASA title that's been tagged on the program, his class involves more research and gathering data for other scientific fields rather than just focusing their studies on the big universe above us. The students will have opportunities to intern at places like the NASA headquarters in Houston and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, an opportunity student Corey Raflob is looking for. He is proud to know this program brings a huge honor to OCC. It's a huge honor, you know, only nine of or only 24 students got picked for this and nine of them are from OCC so not just me in general but for OCC it's a huge honor. The program brings a new spectrum of opportunity for the sciences at OCC essentially putting OCC on the map. As a whole that our participation in the New York Space Grant program elevates our profile across the state so that that some of the movers and shakers in, in, in technology are more aware of our students. Safe to say here at OCC, Houston, we don't have a problem. Students in the program are all required to apply for an internship this summer. What they learn in the Methods of Scientific Research course will prepare them for anything in the field of science. Coming up on On TV Update, we're going to Camillus. We see what one young man is doing to break the stigma of male dancers. Stay tuned for more on On TV Update. I love OCC and I've really been impressed with all of my students here. I teach natural hazards and disasters. Uh, I try to bring in real world events to make what you learn in the classroom applicable to what you might read in the newspaper or see on the news or hear in the media. And then also uh, trying to make it interesting because sometimes science can be a little boring to folks. So I try to make it exciting and so perhaps you don't even realize you're learning science. Felton Art Gallery at Onondaga Community College. Experience art at its most engaging. The gallery features multiple genres of art, including painting, photography, and sculpture. The teachers here are excellent. I've had some really informative teachers. The lessons are pretty clear, and the teachers are very social. It's a very social experience. I like the facility a lot. I liked the, the studios, so I decided to come here. I've learned so much. I've learned an indefinite amount of material about architecture, and I only have more to learn. I would definitely say that this school is excellent for building a portfolio to move on in this major. Are you eager for knowledge outside the classroom? Then visit Coulter Library. If we don't have the book you're looking for, we can get it on loan. We also have a wide selection of movies and music to enjoy on your study break. And our quiet study rooms allow you to work alone or with classmates in a private environment. We're extending hours during finals week until 11 p.m. so you can catch up on your work. Visit our website for more information. Take advantage of Coulter Library today. You'll never fail in your journey to succeed. Are you a veteran looking to continue your education? Then check out the Veterans Affairs Office at Coulter Library. We offer a variety of services, such as work study, mentoring, assistance with financial aid, vocational rehabilitation, and much more. The staff at the Office of Veterans Affairs are all veterans who continue to serve the OCC community. Visit room C-103 or visit SUNYOCC.edu for more information. Welcome back to On TV Update. I'm Dominic Tibbetts. And I'm Bethany Kozachuk. At the Camillus Dance Center, one young man is beginning to break the social norm of men in dancing. Over the years, the arts have been increasing in the greater Syracuse area. For teens, the art form of dance is a creative outlet that encourages self-expression and teamwork. I get to learn more about myself and what works for me and how to express myself better because I'm learning one-on-one -on -one, and then also in a group, in a group setting where I can play off of other people. The creativity of dance has been a catalyst in young people's lives and teachers have been able to see the change. It's definitely a hobby or a sport or whatever you want to call it that can really um, help them branch out and just grow as a person. 
When students first start their training, they usually start off with a pretty simple step, like a jazz square. While the art form of dance has gone through many changes over the years, one thing that hasn't changed much is the gender of the students. It's very rare to see, to see guys in a studio, I think mainly because they don't want to be perceived as gay or it's not masculine or, you know, something that's going to, you know, hinder their masculinity. People definitely stereotype guys who dancing are either gay or bisexual. They're, they most, most of the time they don't think guys are straight who dance. But, you know, it's okay to be a guy and be a dancer because it helps you in more ways than one. Hopefully this art form will continue to increase in popularity and help both genders express themselves. The art form of dancing seems to have had a positive change on the local youth. If you would like to know more, call 672-8607. Are you a student looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Well, American Dining Creations and OCC are trying to accommodate students that have specific diets. Here at Onondaga Community College, students come into the cafeteria daily to look for food options before heading to the next class. But for people who are vegan or vegetarians, this may be harder for them to grab a meal and go. I definitely think they should have a student awareness and see what options or what they think should be more on the menu. Because I know I'm not the only one that has this problem. Within the past year, American Dining Creations has created the AmeriFit Nutritional Tracker. An app students can download to figure out what's in their daily meals. Download the app, scan the code, and you can instantly find what's in your meal for that day. Michael Crable says the need for vegan and vegetarian options aren't in high demand, but they are available. People to come in and be a repeat customer here. I want them to be satisfied with the food they eat. Those are my goals here. So, but if, if I don't get the communication or the feedback back, there's not there's nothing I could do to help anybody. So the next time you have an idea for a healthy food option, don't hesitate to ask. From the Gordon Cafeteria, I'm Kaylea Miller for On TV Update. So if you're a student with a suggestion on what you want to see in the cafeteria, stop by Gordon and write a review on the bulletin board or tell a staff member. So what has everyone got going on this weekend? Well, Bethany, I cannot wait for SU basketball. They're playing uh, at Florida State this Saturday. Uh, it's the final regular season game. It's going to be senior day for the uh, Seminoles. It's a big game. Both teams are on the bubble right now. Um, Syracuse definitely needs a huge win here to, uh, you know, boost their NCAA tournament. Uh, but, you know, hopefully, hopefully they'll pull off a win. This weekend I got going on going to the Sammies, thinking about that. And um, I, have a, I know a girl, Savannah Harmon, she's going to be, she's nominated for one of them. So hopefully that goes well. And now I think we have Caleb with the weather. Thank you. Um, it will still be unfortunately chilly and um, snowy as we still look to this Saturday and Sunday with um, in the mid 30s and finally when we get to Monday it will just there's no turning back it'll be 40s 50s and 60s I so can't wait to use the grill again oh, I hear you I hear you right there Caleb I can't wait this this warm weather just cannot come so I need to see sunshine I'm done seeing the white stuff the sun needs to come out. Definitely, you gotta start growing you. again. Hopefully, Florida will see what happens when, they, when we go there. I mean, a little bit of a teaser I mean, right now. Being, being outside, though, is just is so much better than being cooped up inside, yeah. watching Netflix all winter. I'm ready to stretch my legs. I'm almost like a bear it's coming out of high Definitely. Energy. Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, that's all we have for this, for this edition of On TV Update. Remember to tune in next Friday so you can always be up to date with On TV Update.